right? So if you catch him under the tower with the Chen or the Enchantress creeps, you definitely can find early kills. And Lashrak, rather squishy and vulnerable at these early stages. So I would agree with you. I think probably not going for the early ganks, but they've got a lot of potential to do it after the beginning of the laning stage. Yeah. I, I like LGD's drop better this game than what Secret have pulled out, but I mean, it's Secret. They, they have a plan, and it's, to me, going to be more late game oriented than last game in a lot of ways, where they can't really end this game that quickly unless they really snowball out of control. And Artezi's Gyrocopter does that a lot. It gets, it finds a tons of, tons of kills, then just gets completely out of control if he can move around the map. But they haven't really got... I guess Clockwork's going to be the hero to kind of pair up with him and lead the way with those hookshot initiations. So could see Secret with a quick win here, but I just don't think it's likely. I think this one is going to be going to the late game and Secret are trying to pick heroes that they feel can maybe handle the anti-mage in a late game setting. Well, let's see if that's the case. Welcome in everybody from the live stream and thanks for tuning in to everybody on Dota TV. It's LGD versus Secret. Game number two, Secret with the win here, would catapult themselves into a very decisive first place in Group A. They'd have 13 points and maybe not 100% mathematically guaranteed, but very likely to take the group and with that have their choice of opponent in the winner's bracket round one at the main event in Key Arena. It's the International 2015, day three of the group stage. Today is where so much is decided for many of the teams, a lot on the line. And with that, the bounty rune spawn, S4 grabs one, maybe the other, and we get ourselves underway with what promises to be a really exciting matchup. Yeah, game one delivered. 30 minutes of back and forth, just nail-biting Dota as far as who was going to take it, and everything just kind of blew up for LGD in the span of about two minutes' time. But we'll see if they can remain composed here going into game two. They've gone for the anti-mage. They've also been given Lashrak. And this is going to be... I, I'm trying to talk about slightly LGD favored draft, perhaps, but it's going to come down so much the early game rotations and pressure that Puppy can put out on Enchantress. Our mid lane... Lashrak versus Queen of Pain 1v1, something you see a lot of in, in pubs, but have not seen very much of here at the International thus far, as normally that Lashrak is banned out. And oftentimes the Queen of Pain even ends up in the side lane here for a lot of teams. It will be the offlane shaker for Yao. I'll try to get his early levels, but Kuro focusing on the zoning here. Zai also trying to get his own experience, but having a slightly easier time of it. Both heroes just blocking the creep ways back early. You see the Fissure comes out. They're going to do whatever they can to just get those early levels. But the X factor, as we talked about during the draft cuts, it's really going to be Puppy on the Enchantress. Very defensive draft for LGD because of the cores as well as the types of supports they've picked, which allows Secret to get away with an Enchantress. And even with a slightly greedier support in Kuroki's Visage, who later on normally is going to get, be given a lot of farm priority. Yeah. Defensive, but very much complements the anti-mage pick and... We're going to see... It's a trade-off. You, yeah. you let him, ha you let Secret have their jungle, you let them have a greedier four-position support or five-position, but you make up for it or look to with the anti-mage. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Mid lane, S4, Whoa. solo killed by maybe, just got stunned. He, he started with the level one stun, and he threw it from the high ground and just started chipping away with auto attacks. And then he finally falls prey. I think that was the third stun in a row that maybe had hit on him. This guy's laying is insane. I was, like, watching him for the first, like, Two, oh, two to three creep waves, and he was just... His last hitting and harass on the S4 was just... was nuts. We like saw this versus Mushi as well. Now, if I recall correctly, that was a more disadvantaged matchup for... No, actually, it was Razor versus Queen of Pain uh, versus Fnatic, where S4 died twice solo. Normally, S4 is known for doing very well in the laning stage, but maybe catching him all completely off guard, and not only with the first Blood Gods. He's 11-2. S4 even has a hill ward, so he's got, he knows that there's nobody in the neighborhood. He knows he can play as aggressive as he pleases in this mid lane, and, well, the power of Lashrak in play here. This is, <laughs> this lane gets ugly yeah. from here. He's got a regen room bottle. At the, actually, the dream start for Lashrak, it, it doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, it's, <laughs> this is going to be a sad lane for Queen of Pain. Puppy can consider ganking, but at some point, it's going to be really difficult once Lashrak gets boots. The boots out unless you get the, like the right creep combination it's a very high risk gank and if you go for that gank and it doesn't actually work you're wasting a lot of time where you can be jungling and getting more and getting other stuff done so i'm not sure if puppy's going to take that risk and go for the gank. not to mention Zhao Wei, where he's positioned on the witch doctor here above the mid lane is entirely to stop a smoke gank from enchantress he's happy just to go back and forth from this position to stack in the jungle to protect Leshrac from Enchantress. And speaking of that jungle, look at the start Puppy's had. He found an early Wildkin. He has been just turbo farming. Level four and a half at three minutes. 
basically the level that you'll get from almost a perfectly executed Enigma jungle. Maybe you're five at this point, but this is this is about as fast as it gets. So Secret are still getting a lot elsewhere on the map, but with that kill and the great start he's had, we do see a gold lead developing here for LGD. The experience, though, is going Secret's way. Still pretty even and still very early, but it is a free farm anti-mage. The gyrocopter of Arteezy a bit behind in the CS, mildly so. Yep. Offlaners getting similar experience, a little more to Zai. Close now, and, and I think that's where it just, it really highlights what you bring up with the Witch Doctor. Like, that's the big thing that could screw up LGD here. Zai getting caught in the river, though, and there's the initial lightning to come out. Do they have a follow-up slow? They do. MMY takes the point in Poison Touch. Normally don't see this early. Could cost Zai his life. It will. The low cooldown lightning spam chews through his armor, and Kuroki unable to assist despite the haste turn he found bottom. Everything... It's almost feeling like they need that puppy gank sooner rather than well, later. I, I, so far, he's made the right decision not to gank. Because if he would have gone for that gank, it would have failed. It would have been a waste of time. So it, it's very much just been LGD. They're playing very refined Dota. They they had the Witch Doctor protecting mid. And now when Witch Doctor goes off to kind of help out the top lane or stack some more Earthshaker's there now, they realize the one big way for Secret to turn this game around is a gank on Lashrac. And they're just entirely disallowing that. And... I think Puppy's respecting it. He's just jungle farming. Like, he hasn't had any impact on this game, but he's making the most out of the bad situation by just oh, farming. Oh, as far he wanted to blink. Oh, Ooh, the fifth of stun mistimed. missed time by maybe. Could have popped it a bit sooner there. Would have been Wait. another kill on S4. Oh, he's just lucky to get out of there. Still no boots. 14 CS to the 31 of the enemy Lesh, but... Well, some wasted time there for Yao, and maybe chewing through a lot of his own mana. He'll sell the south here, buys the arcane boots. That's gonna top off Yao nicely, and maybe we'll go back to the mid lane. That could have put this game really out of control for LGD, but they're able to dodge a bullet. Do want to point out, Xiao8 has been calmly stacking up the woods. Maybe he's looking to farm it now. He'll start spamming lightning, the cast comes out, and this will get Xiao8 his levels, because he's just been camping mid, as you pointed out, and he was not getting much experience early, but all of a sudden, almost level 3. One creep wave away or so. Rocket Flare scouts it out, but it's too late, so... I like how they farm it quickly this time. After last game, <laughs> Secret 5 manning yeah. their big stack. No chance LGD is going to give that type of free economy up this time around. Yeah. Now, one of the problems Secret may run into is that both Enchantress and Visage are kind of supports that one farm. You don't have, like, the Kuro Rubik or something else that can be more of a 5 position, allowing Puppy to go for just Midas and playing greedy. Now, he, he may so well go for the Midas, but... These are two supports who can benefit a lot from getting farm. Visage wants the Medallion into the Aghanim Scepter. Similar story with the Enchantress where you want a Midas Aghanim Scepter. So for now, Puppy's getting plenty of farm in the jungle. Kuro hasn't been able to get too much, he's apart from pool camps. But we'll have to see if they give Kuro any space or if he's just going to be like not farming an Ag Scepter any time this game. Because at best, he may get a Medallion unless he's given a lane and some farm this game. It's actually LGD who choose to buy a smoke here. We mentioned uh, very strong defensively, but this is really the beauty of heroes like Earthshaker, especially, where they can also play offense if they need to. S4, again, the Fissure combinations. This is why we see Earthshaker second picked in so many games. It's not just LGD and Secret that often prioritize this hero. It's It feels like it's almost every team. If they get that strong mid laner, a Queen of Pain, a Shadow Fiend, a Lashrak, probably even the best partner in the game right now, you have so many options, whether he plays offlane or support, you can just always go for those picks, and if you're the ones on the back foot, you've got the defensive disengage. LGD off to a hot start here, and maybe after the solo kill, showing off his individual talent. They even get eyes on the secret ancients. Last game it was secret who kind of shut down LGD's own farm in the jungle, but it seems it may go the other way there too. LGD with a lead, not going to sit on it. They want to keep on applying pressure and look to expand it. Yeah, I think the turnaround potential for Secret doesn't at this point doesn't come from Enchantress ganks, but TP rotations from Arteezy. His gyrocopter is the one who can turn fights around and do, dish out more damage than anyone on this Radiant side. But Hold down and Rocket Barrage. But he's not going for the, the ganking build here. No yeah, drums. He's, he's got the Akilla, but he's going into Dominator. Yeah, going... A sign that he wants to focus on farm. And I mean, to be fair, this is a difference between Arteezy and I think the best example that we've seen a lot of, at least you and I in this tournament, Aggressive, where he always goes for like your phase, drums, just run around the map, TP smoke gank, more of a, a ganking gyro, but that's not really the Arteezy way. He likes to farm and he is going to focus on it here. 
Oh, I, uh, maybe Secret deciding this early mid game is not going to go well. Top they go for a kill on bottom. Lane, yeah. They look for it with the call down on Xiao Wei. Saw something coming through. Not enough. Xiao Wei able to stick and heal up. Another rotation. Uh -oh. Maybe he tries to find Arteezy. He's a bit slow without the phase boots. That's a devastating kill, and he's going to grab it. A dominating streak. He looks for Kuro as well. Don't think he'll be quite in range here. They don't have a follow up to that initial lightning slow. He will make it out. Well, if you're going for the Dominator, you cannot afford to die like that. And meanwhile, Silar happily slicing Creep's top lane. Very fast Battle Fury timing in the offing. The Bloodstone will be begin construction here for maybe Zleshrak. Still haven't seen the Enchantress really find any openings. Just farming. Uh, now even going into a Midas, it looks like, for Puppy, potentially. Could have bought his treads if he wanted them. Secret are really rolling, rolling the dice on the farm game right now. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm rolling the dice, but it's they're quickly running out of dice here because I think it's the only one they've got left as far as options go. They've got a huge less track from when the less gets this big. There's just no real way you can fight into it unless you want to overcommit, like your your entire life. You have to use Sonic Wave. You need the Gyrocopter to be coming in. At that point, oh, you're getting heavily outfired. Gods, they just they have a Hill Ward mid, well. and they just rocketed the trees where LGD smoked only five ten seconds before, but they missed it, and they might get completely backstabbed here. Yao and maybe. Looking for the opening. The smoke's going to break. They know there's heroes around the tree line, and they're looking to go. Dying Kuro, to Arteezy tower. just hugging the tower. Yeah. LGD, they hesitate. They back yeah, off. They don't it. know what exactly lurks. So it's... they'll just farm the enemy neutrals. That was almost another two-hero takedown. I think if they dive in there, they get both. But you don't know what it's waiting for. They play yeah. it safe. <laughs> it, it, because they have a lead, it's the right call to play it safe there. It's, you, you probably got Silo yelling, like, guys, guys, I'm having... The anti-mage game here, like this is, I have almost got my battle fury, I'll have it by like 13 minutes here. Just don't do anything to ruin our lead and we'll be fine. They have more to lose than Seeker right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. They, they've got the anti-mage farming, it's a really good anti-mage game. There's, you talked about Queen of Pain Hex as the potential answer to the anti-mage later on, but uh, we're not going to see a Hex for a long time. Maybe, meanwhile, finding a kill on Arteezy, he, he went into the woods to farm and LGD already had the ward in the jungle, so they spotted that. They completely catch him out. Beautifully played. Meanwhile, top, you can see a little pressure maybe going, uh, but oh, it's Puppy. Caught in the jungle as well. He's next. Hasn't left the woods. And so LGD take the fight to him. All of a sudden, completely out of control. Monster Shrek in the making. This guy is going to be so difficult to deal with. And they have an anti-mage problem as well. That's the, ter that's the terrifying part. Even if you manage to get maybe back under control, Silar's farming, and if you focus on Silar, I mean, good luck dealing with maybe. They're they're really caught between a rock and a hard place now. Absolutely, there's they, they haven't really got the ability to gank or pressure Silar anyways. S4's has gone up there to maybe look to contest and slow down his farm a little bit, but ultimately Silar can farm just fine against the Queen of Pain. So and they're farming their stacks once Again, more. Wow. Uh, LGD just ping ponging between aggressive moves into the secret jungle and farming stacks in their own woods. Their economy has been very impressive this game. And at the same time, Secret having four of the mid farmers, but I just look at the cores and yeah. they're so far ahead on LGD. Anti-Mage is in such a good spot. He can get a really good Battle Fury Vlad's timing. He could theoretically look to steal this Radiant Ancient stack because Gyrocopter can't really farm unless he wants to go and like slow farm it with like three to four flat cannons. They, they have to commit three or four heroes, yeah. bringing the familiars, maybe tank it with the Enchantress Untouchable, but... I yeah, they may look own. to farm it early just out of worry for the anti mage stealing it, but yeah, there's a lot of farm to be had. And, and there's a ward there, so they know what's going on, LGD will, for uh, a bit longer. Yeah. It, it requires Vlad's plus Battle Fury, which is still like, if you're LGD, you're like, well, we've got to wait maybe six, seven minutes before we can try and, and contest it's, it. And it's full Midas Gaming Gods. Even the yep. Visage of Kuro is building towards one. LGD, Puppy's they look scouted. to punish even more. The smoke gang comes in, it's Puppy trapped out. Oh, did he find the Midas in time? Yes, just barely, but. They're giving up so much, and it, it feels like their bet is completely made at this point. Double Might is built, as well as going to the early Dominator and the Gyro. There will be no fighting for Secret, only dodging and farming. But even farming may be tough. Arteezy looking for the Ancients, but meanwhile, bottom lane about to get a heavy dose of pressure. They scout with the Weave. I think it just I clipped Kuro there, there, and they see First him. Fissure, another follow-up stun about to come out for maybe. He tries to run, nowhere to go, a monster kill for the monster Shrek and... It's all right, he bought his Midas as well, you know, I, similar story. I, I guess, I mean, <laughs> no. I mean, they've gone double Midas and Dominator and they're still getting heavily up farm yeah, here. They're down 3k gold and this is before the anti-mage effect. 
This is before the battle. Are they the, gonna the head towards the agency? Sure, if they get here soon, they can look to punish OTZ and steal some of this. He's been working on it for a while, but with just the brown boots, aqua helmet dominate, this is a very slow ancients, and this ward has spotted him a few times. It has. I think they're maybe invis. He, this oh is... no! Oh no! Not again! He made oh, the plays man. mid. Can he make the plays of the ancients? Oh, this is oh too easy. easy! If the stun isn't a complete air ball, he's done for. Doesn't even need to hit it on his own. Godlike for maybe nine to zero. Your score. Secret getting slaughtered. This is looking maybe even worse than the loss to Fnatic as far as how the game started. Yeah, at this point it feels like they may just get blanked. Like, where, where do you find that first kill? Like, what, do you, what have you got here? Maybe a hook shot into a cooldown or something? Speaking of hook shot, it looks like Zai did actually use that for something. It's on cooldown back at base, but... Maybe for Silar. I think to escape from Silar is my okay. guess. <laughs> oh, jeez. Probably like a hook TP oh, or something. Oh, denied by Puppy, but it's even going to cost them this one. Cast coming out. They're going in with MMY. They deploy the death board, and Puppy will fall again. He did use his Midas Whoa, earlier. there we go. They commit a lot. They get something. The first kill of the game for Secret, and they whiff the stun here by maybe. I was on the back foot. Can Secret find more? They really need additional kills to come out. A Blake forward, a scream. Even a rocket there's no hook right now as you mentioned it was used earlier 15 seconds on the cooldown there but battle fury ah, is ready now gods yeah. he's just got to send it out there's a bloodstone up on less and this is not just like a he didn't even disassemble his arcane boots that's kind of that's that's <laughs> ridiculously yeah. impressive that's very he's nine zero and zero i mean <laughs> he's his net worth is just, just absurd at the same time, I'm, I'm curious how Secret are going to look at it, because I feel like they'll look at it, and S4 is just going to say, I shouldn't have died to him solo, and a lot of this came from that initial Yeah, play. I mean, some of the following kills were maybe going to be hard to prevent. Like, when the Oshaker rotates in, there's a lot of kill potential between these, so it would be a lot, it'd be a lot better for S4 and not quite as crazy for maybe, but he was always going to have the neutral stacks. He was maybe always going to have an Oshaker rotation, which would probably lead to a kill or two, so... Maybe it wouldn't have been like the godlike list track right now, but it still would have been a good one. I still feel like this would have been a, a fantastic list track game, and they never had any way of shutting down list track or stopping the anti mage farming. The way LGD played with the Witch Doctor mid lane meant that there was no room for Puppy to ever get any kind of successful gank there. And and they knew that was the play. As top lane, the tower will fall. There's a backstep from Puppy, but Yao's in position. They are protecting Xiao Wei's Witch Doctor of all heroes. Maybe now rotates in. Only the eight bloodstone charges, but. At this rate, he may wrap, ramp them up rather rapidly. S4 gets a tower up top, so he's... Yeah, as that, far as, that's important for As Secret. far as the economy goes for Secret, like, they're not terribly far behind on overall net worth. It's been very much like they're getting what they, where they can at wherever on the map, but they, it's coming at the cost of, like, core heroes' lives here and there, and... And it's also it's, coming at the cost of even pressuring the Anti-Mage, who at yeah, this point yeah. has the Battle Fury. Expect to see his farm ramp up. Let's see if LGD continue to find their openings. Familiars are in position to go on Yao. There's a single stun. Second Familiar backing off. I am curious to see how much more pressure LGD wants to put on the map. Because right now seems still like the best time to strike. With Double Midas not really having paid off fully yet. Gyrocopter yet to pick up his BKB. He has 1300 gold on Arteezy though. And they are moving Silar down bottom. So it seems they want to start applying pressure elsewhere. Even a call down use here. You could just see from every move Seeker makes, they don't really want the big fight now. They want yep. the creeps. <laughs> they want to go for the ultra, ultra late game here. There's not much else to it when it comes to what Secret's game plan is going to be, but what's the gold advantage should get slightly more LGD favored just because how much Anti-Mage's farming speed accelerates with the Battle Fury, but... Can they kill him with four? If, uh, the, if they hook into a double familiar stun, mm, maybe, but that's about it. And seeing the clock top, Silar has um, almost no fear. Unlikely. Yeah, he's going for a heavy stats build as well, so he's sitting on about 1,100 HP, so... Yeah, with the with the power treads. And he's got 1,600 up already. I am curious, does he want the Vlads, or does he just go more into a, I... a combat anti-mage this time around? I feel like you skip the Vlads when you feel like you really need a fast Manta against, like, an Orchid timing, but that's... That Orchid timing just doesn't exist. I mean, S4 is sitting on 3.2k, so you don't know what he's going for. He could for, go but... for one. LGD on a big smoke gank here. Secret are sitting back in decent position to reveal it and maybe turn it, but they Fissure Puppy to start. Zai trapped on the wrong side of this one, and now the Lashrak stun comes out, but a four-hero familiar stun coming out from Kuro to try and salvage the fight. The Queen of Pain is there as well. Zai hooks away. The Death Lord doesn't finish him. Are they actually going to turn this fight? They clip and bring down maybe. That's a thousand gold godlike streak ended. Oh, goodness gracious. Is secret right back in it after that one. Silar trying to go to work here. Secret saw it coming. They were ready, but the Monovoid does work. Brains down S4. 
Still relatively healthy. Silar maybe looks to re-engage. Uh, they needed a perfect fight to hold that, and they got it. Kuroki, four hero familiar yep. stun coming out, man. And an S4 rune, of course, on the Queen of Pain. Of course. It allowed him just, like, blink in aggressively, throw his spells, and then he just scurries out of there, so he didn't actually end up in too much danger with the Fissure still on cooldown, so... I mean, aside from the familiar stun, it was just the positioning. Secret knew that exact move was coming. You could yeah. tell from the way their heroes were, were located. They had the clockwork out in front, positioned towards the right side of the jungle, expecting LGD to make their move. Just great game sense here from Secret. LGD, they still have the most farmed cores on the map, but after that fight with two Midas's and a Dominator in play, it's not much of a gold lead, all things Yeah, considered. it's like LGD have two super cores, while Secret have four regular cores here, it feels like. Because the way the two supports on Secret play is they're getting a lot of farm. The Midas's will carry them to the late game. Zai's not going to be able to get much uh -oh. in the way of farm or levels this game. But... Uh oh, it's Secret's turn to move. They're heading towards the pit. Die. They don't have the Queen of Pain ult this time, though. That's a pretty big loss in damage. As Yao looks for the Fissure Block, it's not really a great one, but the Roche will fall off the bat. They give maybe the Aegis. Yao isolated up on the high ground, being pursued out. The cast bouncing nicely. Good defensive play. Meanwhile, the Monoboid. Zai gets trapped along with S4. Melted. They still hold the Aegis. Nobody drops. Big plays there from the Cask of Xiaowei, completely preventing the chase on Yao. And then they isolate and clean up the other two heroes. That just kept on bouncing for days. It, unfortunately for Secret, if it bounced like to the, to the familiars, it would have been Still great. Again. Uh, Puppy dead as well. That's three. LGD right back in the driver's seat. Secret really had to go for that Roche, but without the Queen of Pain ult and with good defensive play by LGD, couldn't find the opening. Having th this Witch Doctor Dazzle support you, it just got, offers so much utility. The Witch Doctor able to just heal everyone up when needed, the cast, the Death Ward, the Dazzle with the Medallion Rush, and just having Grave and heals on your side. It seems like just a fantastic duo defensively all throughout the game. It doesn't really fall off like kind of a lot of defensive laning duos can. These heroes are great even as you go later in the game. They are trying to play the rat game a bit here. Arteezy even creep cutting the top lane will immediately TP out and just gets out in the nick of time. Oh, those are Yules too. That was oh, very close. I don't think he even knew that Yules was in, yeah, in play. Yeah, if maybe a TP like half a second earlier before the Jaro TP, he gets that Yules off. If that's just a regular ledge without a Yules, not even a, a close call. But with the Yules in play, it is a rather close one actually. Well, he does make it out and Secret try to stall the game out. They definitely don't want to fight into this Aegis if they can avoid it. As Secret, uh, or rather as LGD, continue their farm progression. And, and you can see the confidence Silar has now. Freely moving through the enemy jungle. He did opt to skip the Vlads, and that allows him to have a completed Manta style already out at 21 minutes. Much more active anti-mage, and along with that, as we're seeing now, Yao with the Blink Dagger en route. A slower Blink timing, but... Whenever you get the blink, the game always is going to change for the opposition. This is such a Yao game. 0-0-11, zero, zero, just getting tons of assists. He plays the offlane more like a, a support, but he gets so much done because he, he takes advantage of his of his levels. He's really good at just using his levels to be in the right position I mean, look at to mid. set up kills. Look at mid. Look how much he did there for yeah, maybe. He's... So much of Maybe's position right now in this game as the kind of game controller is because of Yao's Shaker. Manta style online and LGD smoking again. They have really been chewing through these as of late, and that is their last smoke for nine minutes, unless there's one city in the stash. They move down through mid, Maybe surging forward in front, and as you mentioned, he's got the Yules. Secret might try to set up for this one. Maybe gets revealed by Zion, the tree line, who has a hook shot ready. Arteezy down in the middle of the river, though. He's the one caught out. Fissure, and nobody even in the neighborhood to protect him. Melts to the Pulse Nova. Immediately, Secret going to try to push out this bottom lane with S4 and get the hell out of dodge. Maybe close. Goes for the stun. Half a second too late. He's, he's right on their tails, man. He's just yeah. nipping at them. This is this is intense for Seeker right now. They yeah. cannot even breathe for a moment. It does show you like the, just the map awareness and skill of these Seeker players to just get away by half a second every single time with their split push. A lot of players in those positions would just get caught and you'd say, well, they got caught, but they've got to be split pushing when you're this far behind. But Secret do it without getting caught. And good news for Secret, that is the last smoke LGD have for, I think it's like seven and a half minutes now. So they're going to have to apply offense the good old fashioned way, just straight down the middle lane, show their faces and go for towers. But well, the bad news for Secret is these heroes demolish towers. An anti-mage with a Manta, not even pop just yet. Maybe with the Max Edict, almost level 16. 3.5k gold. He's still keeping the pace with a free farm AM of his on his own team. As Yao swings around bottom lane, puppy just hiding in the trees and 
Uh, it, this may be where you want to have S4 on your team. You, the the head-on tactics aren't working, but you've got the old alliance captain to, <laughs> to coach the team That's on the red Dota. The ways of the, the Admiral Bulldog. Yes, well, they, they had a seance this morning, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be tricky. You've got Puppy down bottom, you've got a couple up top. Familiar is also great for some split push as well. And yeah, the options for Secret right now is still limited, just kind of trying to buy as much time as possible to scale towards that late game. The Sages is running out soon. Oh, they found one. Again, a trap. Zai caught out on the high ground. Yules into the stun and dead. That's the one hero you're most okay with losing, though. So yeah, it is. As much as he's, quote unquote, off lane three, three position player, no, the, this game, he is he's the main support. Secret are applying pressure elsewhere. Three up in the top lane, but looks who's rotated into Hasted, maybe. This time he fights Kuro. The cooldown gets dropped on Silar, but Kuro won't be so lucky. Yules is at the ready. Monovoid gets chucked out just to ensure the kill. A drive by by the pony. And now they push the top lane. This will be the second to last downer tower if they claim it. And, well, it seems all but certain they will claim it. They are lacking their Earth Shaker, but he's defending really the split matter. push, but. Nice deep of Radiant Observer Ward spots him out. This is important because if you're going to split push mid bottom lane and you see a four man push from LG, you're like, okay, it's probably safe. But an Earthshaker Blink Echo with one hero teeping in, that's potentially a dead gyro. Although, with that said, Arteezy, he's still split pushing. Maybe he's not taking advantage oh, of that. Oh, no, he's bro. not. Blink Echo, Yao oh. says, what the hell are you thinking, sir? Mega kill for maybe slaughtering the copter. I was just about to talk about that ward. Preventing stuff like that happening, but Arteezy, I mean, you doesn't you're in a help you against position. that. Yeah. yeah, it's like you talked about with uh, Eternal Envy the other day. Sometimes in this position, you just have to suicide push as a core. Keep on pushing, keep the lanes back until they actually kill you, just to slow the game down. But this... he is their team fight right now, really, and uh, it's going to be a tough hold from here, guts. Absolutely. Silas got the Eagle Song up, so we'll be going to a butterfly. Great damage output and pushing potential from this. And let's see, can Seeker pull out a miracle here? It's going to take close to that to hold this one. There is no Echo, which is the slight piece of good news. At the same time, no Gyrocopter, no buyback. As for Khan, there's a double stun into a Death Lord. They get the kill. Shall we just force back Grave onto maybe holding him and keeping him alive no for now? Ages. Now the self fuels. There's no Echo. He's going to Bloodstone deny, so they don't get the benefit of that kill. But LGD will be rebuffed here, at least for now. Now there's the blink in, and now the Chinchant Totem follow up. They find the kill. And Lesh is back in five seconds. Very surgical so. moves here by LGD, and they will back. I don't know if they want to continue going for a high ground. With Gyro respawning, and again, Lesh not having the Aegis, this makes things a you bit tricky, and you just have that high risk factor where if, if the Lesh Rack dies for whatever reason, that's a huge amount of gold going the way of Team Secret. And they've got two really big items about to come out. The BKB just completed, or maybe it's Lesh Rack. Secret don't have much on this. They have the Impetus, I believe, but that's really about it. And frankly, this Enchantress is just running for her yeah. life. The Queen of Pain ult, so-so. Not bad. I mean, yeah. He's just it's... so tanky at this point. I mean, you're looking at a Lashrak with 1,700 HP, the double heals coming out, earn charges all over the place, and it's going to be tough to actually burst yeah. him down. And Butterfly for Anti-Mage, very close as well, so... And the next Roche, maybe they wait for that, but they found Puppy in the jungle. Fissure blocks the path of retreat, maybe just gonna bypass the call down and go directly, and Zai hooked MMY in the midst of this. He finds the first kill, did take some heavy damage, but Xiao Wei marches forward, goes to work on the back, so with the death wound on Arteezy, but cleaned up by a beautiful S4 ultimate, not gonna matter. Silar was there, he slams it home. Then the Yules, they're looking to clean up the entire of the secret draft. Kuro being dope back, Blake, it's dead, he's dead. And it's for the lone survivor, the clockwork of Zai, who did TP home. Buybacks are available on two here, but there's no call down. There's no Queen of Pain ult. And LGD, they're looking for the game to win. There's the buyback. I, I honestly think they could consider going here, but they just want to play it safe. They know Roche is up, gods, and with the next stage, in fact, he's up in 15 seconds. Then they can really just ball down mid. Yeah, when buyback's already been forced, so from there you're looking at anti mage and less track scaling even more towards the late game. Gyrocopter, his item progression is going to slow down. That was his BKB money. He no longer has anything towards the Mithril Hammer, the last piece of the puzzle. So 1300 short of, of a BKB. May have it before the next LGD push comes since they're going to go for Roshan, but there's so little farm on the map for Secret to take. It's really difficult for anyone to build items right now. I just look at the net worth graph and there's just so few green dots. It's a really sad sight for the secret fans out there. I mean, it was about 20 minutes before they got a kill, so... There's five <laughs> dots here for secret and there's 
And there's just an endless sea of red below that, just yeah. marking LGD's dominance so far of this game it's, number two. It's the blue, dude. It's the blue. <laughs> well, maybe not only playing a really strong hero, but he's played it well. He's made all the right moves, and now they look for another Aegis. Siler will blink into the pit, and away LGD goes with this Aegis. Bottom tier two still to be claimed. Maybe they want that, but it honestly feels like they can just run down mid and take a full yeah. lane of Rex. One of the few games we're going to get to see maybe an uh, Aghanim Scepter on Dazzle as well. MMY has a point booster picked up, so luxury, real luxury items coming out. And just feeling like he doesn't need a Glimmer Cape or anything. There's no real magic damage burst coming out from Secret. Eh, outside of like, the Gyrocopter, but you don't need a Glimmer Cape too much this game. Probably doesn't feel like he needs a full staff. Just tanking up with more stats just limits Secret's killing potential or ability to win a fight. You called them super carries earlier, and they were only just getting towards it now. But I mean, look at that net worth graph. Yep. They are over doubling up every single secret core. These two alone all top lane. S4 trying to split push. He does Blake, but it's not really the longest range Blake. And he's caught by an enchant totem. Solo killed in the end by Yao. Clobbers him. That will slow down the push that was mounting bottom lane, but LGD still not giving up any towers for free. They hold the tier two top. They're gonna even defend mid with Xiao 8, hunting familiars on his way out. And now Kuro in the river. He'll be the next pick off here. Found a rune, but not gonna matter. The regen won't save him from the endless fires of, as you called him, the blue dude. And now it's time for LGD. Down the mid lane, looking to make this series 1 1. And should they pull it off, guys, it makes Group A super interesting on the stretch. Both teams will be tied with 11 points. Here we go. Tower falls. Where's the hold from Secret? No buybacks on two. It, it might not even be a hold. They may just GG out in the middle of this push, honestly. They take one melee rex. They look for Puppy as well. The blink forward from Silar. He's found him deep behind the tier fours. Shredded. Just never felt the impact of the Enchantress this game. And now a leap in again, forcing Artiz even further back. They are really committing to this one. LGD, normally they play it safe and just take objectives, but they want some kills along the way. These guys want to celebrate the win that they see in their future. Silar barreling towards this tower, slicing and dicing. And they may make their move in in just a moment. A stun forthcoming. Nope, maybe does get hexed here. Maybe they can turn this one, but he's ever so tanky. He's still got the BKB available. If he really needs to use it, he can. And he'll pop it now. And he runs back in with Silar trying to isolate Kuroki on the backside. Shreds his armor. Doesn't even have the Mana Void pop just yet. He's waiting to use an Arteezy, it seems. Might be able to kill him at the well. S4 also fairly low. They force back the Visage again. And now it's only three to hold. Called on already used. Queen of Pain hold up. LGD showing discipline here in the clutch. They'll take two full lanes of Rex. And I don't even know if they back. Here's Puppy to reemerge, but the Fissure's gonna catch to the left on the other. Everybody disabled on Secret. Silar. Just ch chopping Bambi to bits here. He's still got the Aegis. He didn't get off the Mono Void. He may get a double kill on the way out as Arteezy throws his own life away. Everything for the base. It's not going to matter. LGD make it 1-1. And they take this game too in one of the most one-sided games of the tournament, frankly. Yeah, very convincing. But you could still... I'm all from start to finish. Just great play coming out of LGD. They dominated the mid lane. I and mean, the solo kill from may be a big part of that. But it feels like, to me at least, with even without it, things just with their draft were really hard to deal with. They had no answer for the anti-mage. There was no real way secret.